November 6, 1982, November 6, 2024, Cameroonians remember the events that led to the oath taking of Cameroon's second president, Paul Bia. The testimonies of close aides come up tonight on the 7.30 News. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump each need at least 270 electoral votes to win the presidency. Voters in all 50 states and the District of Columbia casting their ballots today. A phone one pupil dies during a sports and physical education exercise at the government high school died in Douala. She was watching the activities from a height and fell off after sustaining injuries or attempts to save her life in hospital were futile. Thanks for watching. This is the 730 News. You're welcome. I'm Esther Kima. We begin our half hour newscast with this tragedy from the West Region. Three persons have died and one other seriously injured after a mudslide in Chang today. The incident, which occurred early today, has been decried by West Governor Awa Funke Augustine. Rescue teams are still on the side to dig up other bodies and to retrieve heavy duty trucks buried in the rubble. Here is Awa Funke Augustine, Governor of the West Region. It was a landslide about, at about uh, uh, 11 a.m. this morning and uh, the public works department was mobilized uh, to clear this debris so that uh, traffic between Chang and uh, Sancho can uh, be re-established. And surprisingly, there was a second landslide that came and caused terrible damage. All the Pillars that were involved in this uh, exercise have been buried down there, along with vehicles as well as motorcycles and uh, individuals, passers-by that were uh, watching at uh, what was happening, were all buried down there. So at the moment, uh, three corpses have been retrieved from uh, uh, the debris, and uh, uh, we're looking forward with the. Uh, the work that is going on now to see how many persons uh, will be taken out of uh, uh, the rubble. Thank you. Thank you. And the sympathy of the 730 News goes out to the affected families. We hope that the other corpses will be retrieved. On to another tragedy. A former one pupil has died during a sports and physical education session in the government high school Daido in Douala. Florence Doval Bejak and Paco is reported to have sustained injuries after falling from her heights while she was watching the exercise. The injuries claimed her life in spite of the intervention of medical doctors. Rabiatu Jingi Abdulaziz reports that the regional delegate for secondary education in the littoral, Tama Eboa, was at the institution. A recreational moment turned sour as young Florence Doval Benjaka Bako dropped dead right before her classmates. We were called this morning from GBHS Daido of an accident that occurred this early hours during physical education classes. The students were working with their teacher. The said student wasn't taking part because when you don't partake, you are put aside to observe. While the teacher was exercising with the other students, the child hung on a goal post. As it's a multi-purpose hall, the goal post is sometimes movable. So she unfortunately hung on it and it fell on her. The demise of Florence, a 10-year-old from one student, has created a feeling of gloom and sadness in the hearts of her peers who are still in shock. We cried and prayed for her. The regional delegate for secondary education was on site to condole with the educational community of government bilingual high school, Daido. Calm and serenity have returned in the school premises and this will be reinforced with a special assembly scheduled for Wednesday. We continue our uh, half our newscast with the preparation of the oath taking of the constitutional successor of Cameroon's first president, Amadou Ayijo. It was on November 6, 1982, that President Paul Bia swore before the Cameroonian people to uphold the constitution and to protect the integrity of the nation. But before that, the uncertainty that prevailed about the ceremony and the optimism of some are part of history. The former director of state protocol, Jean Baptiste Beliokin, witnessed in all as we hear in this report by Charles Ebune. Yeah, on the Cameroon on Friday, November 5, 1982, the day after the announced resignation of President Amadou Ayijo 
and the day before the swearing-in of Paul B. as President of the United Republic of Cameroon, as it was known at the time. La première observation, c'est la première fois qu'un tel événement arrivait dans le pays. The first observation was that it was the first time such an event occurred in the country. The former president, Amadou Ayiju, wanted us to give it the prestige it deserved. When he resigned on November 4, on November 5, he summoned us in his residence, the director of cabinet, myself, and an aide. This man, Jean-Baptiste Belioquin, was the chief of state protocol and had to manage the ceremonial of the swearing-in of the new president of Cameroon. Il a souhaité qu'on applique à la lettre ce qu'a prévu le texte, en particulier en ce qui concerne les honneurs civils et militaires, especially civil and military honors, which are the highest. In my document for the event, I applied what the 1976 law stated. The state protocol at the time issued invitations to all the heads of the key state institutions of the time to attend the event at the National Assembly at 10 a.m. on Saturday, November 6, 1982. He thought what was the most salient according to the Constitution, notably the respect of the Constitution, sovereignty, security, and the unity of the state and republican affairs. Ainsi qu'à la conduite des affaires de la République. Just one person was awaited on Friday, November 5, 1982, for the swearing-in ceremony. The House Speaker, Solomon Tandem Muna, who was out of the country for a mission, and that is why the swearing-in ceremony was delayed for two days to enable him to come back in the country to perform his constitutional duties. Choice of President Paul Beer by President Amadou Ayijo to lead the country was no surprise for persons who've had the privilege to work with the son of the South in the course of his career. He is generally remembered for his assiduity and devotedness in all tasks performed. His dexterity as Prime Minister and later on as Head of State is testified by the Minister in Charge of Special Duties at the Presidency of the Republic, Amadou Mustafa. Beatrice Ngum tells us more. Amadou Mustafa served in the government from 1975 to 1983, again from 1992 to 1997, and he has been minister in charge of special duties at the presidency of the republic since December 2004. When I first knew Bia, he was secretary general and I was in charge of special duties. Our offices were side by side after he became prime minister and then president of the republic. I lived all this stage. That is the man Bia I know. He has recollections of the events leading up to the advent of the New Deal administration. Maintenant. Before Ahijo's resignation, it was already rumored in the corridors. After the resignation, he united us, political leaders from the three northern regions, in his lakeside residence, told us he has handed power to Bia and will like us from the north to work with him. Amadou Mustafa points to ardent opponents of the New Deal that the Bia administration could not have got it all wrong in 42 years. The first achievement is democracy. The first time we had multipartism was under Bia. The second thing is peace. The third most important thing is agriculture. Cameroon practically fits Central Africa. Amadou Mustafa is the president of the National Alliance for Democracy and Progress, ANDP, a political party which supports President Paul Beer. 
Actors in the economic sector equally hold President Bia close at heart as one who has triggered economic development in the country. A Cameroonian entrepreneur, James Obiono, describes the head of state as a leader who is attentive to the needs of the population and who has remained faithful to his political ideals. He intimates that though some projects are yet to attain the set objectives, targeted rebound is worth noting. Clarice Areitaka reports. A business undertaking is what brought the seasoned entrepreneur and the statesman into contact with each other. The businessman was interested in setting up a local industry but was faced with opposition. It took the intervention of President Paul Bia to break the deadlock. I made an application to implement and to put in place my fact the factory of uh, cigarettes and the sole industry in the, in the area uh, went in the government trying to oppose the issue was brought to the presidency and the president told the, the people that they should grant me the license because and at the fair in Bamenda, uh, I told him that it's because of him I got my the license. Whether in public or in private, he describes his encounters with the head of state as moments during which diverse issues are discussed. These all served to discover various facets of the President of the Republic. Attentive. Taking a lot of time to make the decision. Some people think that it's too slow. But at the end of the game, it's always successful. That is the reason why we say perhaps the method is using is the, the good one. And uh, for me, he's a, a leader. The years may have gone by, but in the words of James Onobiono, President Paul Bia has stayed true to himself and his political ideals. The focus tonight is on the strides covered by President Paul Bia. An important marker of the New Deal is the immense diplomatic victories recorded by Cameroon in the last 42 years. One of the most recent is the election of Philemon Yang as president of the 79th session of the United Nations General Assembly. The bilateral and multilateral foreign policy objectives have maintained the independence of Cameroon, as we hear in this report by Charles Ibune. Expanding the country's extraterritoriality space with plus 50 ambassadorial level and consular service missions abroad globally today with a well-defined foreign policy code has been one of the hallmarks of the new deep diplomatic arsenal. The preservation and the protection of our sovereignty and secondly to make sure that Cameroon should never interfere and non-interference in any country's domestic affairs. And also the third pillar, I did say, it, is the settlement of uh, conflict, uh, any different or any conflict between countries by dialogue. One of the trademarks of Cameroon's diplomacy over the past 42 years has been the maintenance of the policy of good neighborliness with all bordering countries best translated by the peaceful settlement of the Cameroon-Nigeria border difference over Bakasi. A testimony of how Cameroon is a wise country, a country of dignity, uh, a country of law uh, through uh, its president. The diaspora with plus six million people today has received special attention from the Bia administration just as the placement of Cameroonians in international organizations. We are doing what we call uh, the uh, campaign uh, to have our compatriots, many of them be uh, appointed in uh, various uh, positions, uh, various posts in the international uh, public service, either at the United Nations, the AU, a country with peace as one of its virtues, the Cameroonian military has been a source of diplomatic prowess in international peacekeeping missions. Capacity and peace building uh, in the minister, as we say uh, in French, and some other areas uh, in the past where uh, our troops 
Dafu. Yeah, Dafu, yeah. Where our troops have been always very, very appreciated for the qualification in order to bring peace. The multiplication of bilateral and multilateral partners over the years has been aimed at ensuring stability in global appearance. One thing is certain. In diplomacy, there are neither successes nor failures. Just assume positions and decisions. The New Deal is fixed within that reality over the past 42 years. Basic education sector, the New Deal, has impacted the quality and access to services, free education for all in primary schools, and the steady recruitment of teachers to achieve the 1 to 45 pupil teacher ratio have been beneficial. Further, in the secondary education level, the New Deal has professionalized and digitalized teaching. Beatrice Losamba reports that the transformation of schools with President Paul Bia is glaring. The New Deal government has walked a mile in its vision to build schools in every locality, as statistics show at least a school now exists three kilometers from the most enclaved localities in the country. The government decree free education for all in primary schools on February 4, 2001. Consequently, the scholarization rate increased drastically to 140%. The teacher-student ratio of one teacher per 45 pupils achieved further max progress in the basic education sector. From 2006 to 2012, the government recruited 37,500 teachers. From 2012 to 2018, 9,000 teachers were recruited, and again, the recruitment of the last wave started in 2018. Learning has been structured such that Professional skills are acquired from secondary school. The head of state's vision to digitalize learning is also on good footing, adding to the milestones worked in education in the last 42 years. The policy of e-learning and e-governing was put in place and this gave birth to a center for distance education. Thanks to distance education, government is bridging the gap and changing narratives for students and peoples in faraway places where failure tends to be easy. On peut soit organiser des cours. Thanks to this initiative, students in places like Yagua get a chance to ask questions from very qualified teachers. Schools gradually moving from this to this. The vision to making education accessible and making learning comfortable, easy and profitable appears attainable with the measures put in place by the New Deal government. Education to sports, there has been remarkable international sports victories recorded by Cameroon under the leadership of President Paul Beer since 1982. The Indomitable Lions have won the African Nations Cup five times. This is coupled with three Olympic medals, three women's African Volleyball Cup of Nations and several distinctions in individual sports. Sons of the Soul like Isa Ayatu and Kalkaba Malbum have benefited from President Paul Beer's support to head sports confederations in Africa. Baldwin Summer reports on these and many other games. Like a father who has stood by his children for several years, President Paul Bia's sports achievements remain unique, beginning with the five Africa Cup of Nations, won in 1984, 1988, 2000, 2002, and 2017, respectively. <laughs> Under President Paul Bia's stewardship, Cameroon became the first African country to reach the quarterfinal of the FIFA World Cup in Italy in 1990. So far, Cameroon has backed home three gold medals at the Olympic Games, first in 2000 in Sydney with the under-23 football lions, then in 2004 and 2008 respectively through Francois Mbango Etone. The volleyball lionesses are not left out. Thrice they have made the nation proud, winning the Women's African Volleyball Cup of Nations in 2017, 2019 and 2021. Thanks to President Paul Bia's quest for excellence, Cameroon successfully organized the 2016 Women's Africa Cup of Nations, 2020 African Nations Championship and the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations being a pace 
better for others to emulate. And what about President Paul Bia's successful sports diplomacy? During his stewardship, many Cameroonians have managed sports organizations on the international scene, such as Issa Bayato, who served as CAF president for over 20 years. Hamad Kalkaba Malboum has benefited from President Paul Bia's trust, serving several international organizations. My government gave me the authorization and then my government supported me financially and even uh, the, our diplomats, our ambassadors, sometimes they, they brought their own contribution. All these sports achievements make President Paul be an example for others to emulate. On to the beautiful achievements of the No Deal governments in the regions. We'll take you over to the Southwest region where infrastructural development has been key. The population rejoices over the construction of four stadia in Limbe and two in Boya. The main stadium in Limbe, which hosted Pool F of the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations, is celebrated. Shanslin Nanze reports on these and more from the Southwest. Paul Bia is referred to as the number one sportsman in Cameroon and he has inundated the country with sports infrastructure, including the southwest region with six stadia, the Limbe Omnispor Stadium and its annex, the Middle Farm Stadium, the Centenary Stadium, the Boya Town Stadium and the Moliko Stadium. During the 50th anniversary, he spent five days with us here, so he may have had the opportunity to see by himself uh, the dynamism of the southwest region in the domain of sports. So uh, I think down to those uh, aspects, he may have decided to build those ultra-modern stadia. These stadia hosted pools of calf organized competitions like the Women's AFCON in 2016, Shan 2020 and AFCON 2021. We had the honor and the blessing to have been chosen to accompany the head of state. So I will continue to say immensely uh, thank to the head of state for having accepted that I be there. And today, because I was there, I have the challenge of maintaining those in, uh, sport infrastructure. The sustenance of the Mount Cameron Race of Hope under Paul Beer, which has made Boya a melting pot of athletics in February every year, is credited to the head of state. And in the far north region, which has benefited from several visits from the head of state, Paul Bia, in 42 years, he's heightening the spirits of the population. Henry Tato Ikambi tells us about some of the projects that make hay in the region. Fondly called the eldest daughter of the New Deal, the far north's strong bond with President Paul Bia can be seen through many lenses, though his visits in the region a record ten times stands tall. It is father and son relationship. And they are the most loved son of, uh, of uh, the President of the Republic. Here in Lugone Sharif, we are really attached to his person. The region has benefited from various projects and many of the head of state's close collaborators hail from this region, further solidifying his connection to the land and the people here. A special commitment between President Bia and, uh, and the Fano region. First of all, when President, uh, President Bia accessed to the Supreme Majesty of Cameroon, he first created the Fano region. And also, President Bia have been appointing people from the Fano region in the most important positions, he gave us opportunities to improve life, improve all aspects of life in the Far North. The trust and respect between President Paul Bia and the Far North region are palpable, and the population are hoping this marriage continues harmoniously. And the achievements recorded by President Paul Bia in 42 years is spotlighted in the magazine L'Afrique Emergente, published by Sidonie Lekla Basson. The 88-page publication delves into the social, economic, political and diplomatic wins recorded during his home at the States. Yoti Kalilisongu reports that reactions of some political figures and a vivid description of the Bia administration feature prominently in the magazine. A somewhat summary of President Paul Bia's 42-year journey at the helm of the nation. L'Afrique Emejante goes down memory lane, bringing to the limelight 
more than four decades of successes and challenges, with His Excellency Paul Bia steering the affairs of the Republic of Cameroon. What first catches the attention of the reader is the editorial penned down by the publisher, Sidonie Legla Basong, who is keen on the social, political, economic and diplomatic input of the November 6th man Paul Bia for a better and stronger Cameroon. Insights into the head of state's accomplishments in terms of decades comes next. Readers are made to see the 1982 to 1992 era as one that was full of hope with a series of reforms highlighting the president's vision. Before proceeding to the period from 1992 to 2002, when his stance for diplomacy and economic openness became all the more visible, and then the 2002 to 2012 epoch, when major development projects were defined, and finally, from 2012 till date, an age during which Cameroon has been heading towards emergence with President Paul Bia at the fore. The Bia administration is also presented within the pages of this publication, one of them being the Speaker of the National Assembly, Honorable Kava Yege Jibril, who in an exclusive interview with the magazine, renews his support for the Head of State, the Director General of CRTV Shal Ndungu, also has an engrossing article that translates as Paul Beer, 42 years later, the anthology of a mystery, wherein the seasoned journalist not only comes back on the most recent rumors of the man at the Unity Palace, but goes further to reveal what he describes as the Beer code of absence, distance, and silence, which he underlines should not be taken at face value, but considered as part of the head of state's leadership skills. Another publication which celebrates the President of the Republic is authored by Parfait Mini Namu. It is titled Paul Bia, Artisan, d'une jeunesse entrepreneur, and was presented to the population of the Adamawa region. Ellis Wajibangmia was at the book launch for the 730 News. Here's his report. The book presentation ceremony dedicated to President Paul Bia celebrated his contributions to youth development in Cameroon. The event brought together political leaders, educators and youth representatives from the Adamawa, highlighting the importance of education and socio-economic engagement. If all the youths of Adamawa in particular and the youths of Cameroon they come to read that book, they practice it, they will learn how to contribute by themselves. The author, Parfait Mininamu, in his book, emphasizes President Bia's robust educational reforms. The patron of the event, Honorable Ali Bashi, highlighted that the initiatives reflect the president's commitment to equipping the youth with the skills and knowledge necessary. The book presentation in the presence of Adamawa Governor Kiel Daddy Tageke Buka in Goundary served not only as a celebration of President Bia's achievements for the past 42 years, but also as a call to action for continuous socio-political integration of youth, which is seen as a cornerstone of the president's vision for the nation. And now out of Cameroon, it is election day in American Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump each need at least 270 electoral votes to win the presidency. The state of Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania and Wisconsin are expected to be pivotal to the path to victory. Ebenezer Akanga has been following up the campaign and now reports on what obtains on election day in the U.S. The latest polls showed Democrat Kamala Harris and Republican Donald Trump tied before the opening of the vote. Millions of Americans have been casting their vote in an election whose closing time to vote varies from state to state. Harris and Trump are facing off after months of intense campaigns. The two candidates have been running neck and neck, making the outcome of the election very unpredictable. The swing states or battleground states, namely Arizona, Georgia, Michigan, Nevada, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin are expected to play a pivotal role on which way victory goes. U.S. election results are sometimes declared within hours after the closing of the polls. But this year's tight contest could mean a longer wait. Kamala Harris is seeking to make history by becoming the first female president of America, while Donald Trump is running for re-election for a second non-consecutive term after losing to Joe Biden in 2020. 
Under this advertorial, a digital resource collection known as the eLibrary USA has been introduced in the Biaka University of Boya Curricula. The officials of the U.S. Embassy were in the institution of higher learning to launch the project, as we hear in this report by Fame Bunui Ayise. In a significant event, the Biaka University Institute of Boya welcomed a delegation from the U.S. Embassy in Yaoundé. Led by Deputy Public Affairs Officer Amanda Coldwell, the delegation engaged with staff and students of the university during a tour of key facilities on campus. The highlight of the visit was an informative session on eLibrary USA, a digital resource collection aimed at providing students and staff with valuable educational materials, particularly in the area of research. Um, one of the things that the American Embassy believes very strongly in is that all students should have a chance to go to school and to learn. And so the American Embassy will continue to support education and learning and students and universities and schools and the list goes on. Dr. Francisca Hongla Biaka, CEO of Biaka University Institute of Boya, who also doubles as Vice Chancellor of the University, was quick to express her gratitude and excitement for such partnership which opens doors to new resources and enriches their academic environment. We need it. We have been looking for it because um, we know very well that the books are not really available, you know, physically. So the digital, form, and then even if you go, digital is very expensive. I mean, to get registered, you know, as an institution in the such, uh, you know, um, to get access to such, is very, very expensive. We tried it several times, but the American Embassy has come to deliver this to us free, and we are very, very happy. The presentation of the eLibrary USA by the American Spaces Specialist was met with enthusiasm from students and faculty alike now eager to explore the countless online resources freely accessible to them for the most part. It's worth mentioning that the visit to the Biaka University Institute of Boya by the U.S. Embassy delegation is part of a broader outreach initiative aimed at enhancing collaboration between U.S. institutions and Cameroonian universities. To wrap up this edition of the 7th to News, a recap of some of our major stories. November 6, 1982. November 6, 2024, Cameroonians remember the events that led to the oath-taking of Cameroon's second president, Paul Bia. The testimonies of his close aides came up on tonight's edition of the news. And today is election day in the U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris and former President Donald Trump each need at least 270 electoral votes to win the presidency. Voters in all 50 states and the District of Columbia are casting the ballots today and there was a tragedy in Douala. A form one people succumbed after watching a sports and physical education activity. She fell off from a height and died in spite of the intervention of medical doctors. More news comes up at 8.30 p.m. with Romeo and Tracy Gok. Our programs continue on the CRTV and on CRTV News. Thanks for watching. I'll be back tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. God willing, stay tuned. Good night.